So we're here at uh, Linaro Connect with uh, Kiko. That's right. So you're at Canonical, what do you do? Canonical makes Ubuntu, the world's leading cloud operating system. So you had a keynote today and it was kind of uh, fun, right? I don't know, I had a lot of fun. Did you have fun? Yeah, it was cool. So what did you say? I was just talking about where I think ARM server needs to go in order to be successful. So what does what does the industry need to do to make ARM servers successful? Basically reinvent servers. Basically think servers are fresh. This is what the this is a challenge really for ARM servers. That you ARM servers are gonna be irrelevant if all they're doing is reinventing X86 server, right? And so if you think about what do big X86 servers do? They fundamentally they have hot, hot pluggable everything because they need to have redundancy and reliability built into the hardware. They need to have support for lots of different operating systems. They need complicated firmware in order to be able to support those operating systems and to do stuff like lights out management. But for ARM, what, could we take a fresh view on that and actually do something which is different from what's the standard on x86? And I think that is possible, right? It is possible for you to take Occam's razor to the server and say, if I threw away everything which was non-essential for the server, what would that be? So if we're having a discussion around firmware, what's the least, what's the smallest amount of firmware that I can provide with the server that actually would make a difference? Um, if it's in terms of software, what operating system are these things going to run? Well, if they're cost constrained and if they're looking at next generation scale out workloads, then what's likely to happen is that they're going to be running Linux and they're going to be running open source applications in analytics, in web, in machine learning, in scale out storage. So I think if you take the, that view of it, that this, app, this, this platform is only going to run Linux, it's only going to run open source scale out applications, then there's, a, then there's a lot less that you need to focus on in terms of supporting non-Linux management or lights out because in, in reality you're going to boot up a system and it's going to be running Linux from 99.9% .9 of the time. The firmware will exist for 100 milliseconds and then you'll run the operating system without updates, I don't know, for a month maybe. So that's where I think the opportunity really is. So you had a whole list of software that's just irrelevant now. Right. I think fundamentally because the business model for enterprise software, stuff like SAP, stuff like Oracle Database, etc., just doesn't match what we have on, on ARM. I mean, if ARM is going to be competitive, there are two things which are challenging in, in reality. The first one is the ARM servers themselves won't have the same single node performance as Xeon E7s, right? You, you're, gonna have, you're not going to have Xeon E7 performance on an ARM CPU, right? So that's the first one. The second one is fundamentally it's very expensive. Enterprise software is something which is super expensive. And so the hardware cost there, or the hardware the infrastructure cost is not as important because you're paying $100,000 for a year of that enterprise software subscription. So if you're paying that much money and the server costs $5,000 or if it costs $1,000, even though you're paying one-fifth of the cost, it doesn't make much of a difference, right? You're like, oh, whatever. I need to have servers to run this and they need to be super reliable. The other thing is that enterprise software in general wasn't designed to be scaled out. So it's not really something which you do run in a high availability configuration and you don't make it faster by adding more servers. Clustered enterprise software is much less prevalent out there. And so this is why I think the perfect match for ARM is really scale out open source on Linux. So it's cloud. It's like the cloud. So it's like the cloud, but it's real hardware. I think that's really what the difference is. Real hardware cloud. What, what do you mean by that? Is it is, is, is the base is the kind of stuff that Google would want to do and Facebook and that's these exactly, guys, right? So that's exactly right. So these guys have already figured out, okay, they need to scale their applications because they have millions and millions of users hitting their application servers at once. And so they know that they need to provide lots and lots of servers for that function. How do you provide that level of I guess quality of service, reliability, and scalability of performance without having to be Google and Facebook. So ARM could be the vehicle through which scale out is made accessible. And ARM, together with tools that like we're producing inside Canonical, Juju and Maz for orchestration and provisioning, that combination there together gives anyone who's deploying, not just somebody special like Facebook or Google, but anybody who's deploying, the same access to the same sort of technology. So you can scale out your workload, you can manage at scale in an efficient way. So, 
Is the software there? The hardware is not there yet. What's going on? When, when is it? When is it happening? When, so the when hardware, is ARM totally going to dominate servers? Right, right. So this is going to be a process. The hardware has just come out, right? So the first commercially available systems are now are now out there, and we're going to see more systems come out next year. But ultimately, the hardware which is out there in the market today. It's, it's good enough, you know, we have good performance, good stability, and actually the software availability, which is the second piece of what you asked there, is incredible. I mean, we've built over 45,000 packages of Ubuntu for ARM V8. Everything that you care about is available today. We've got a commercially supported release that was made in April, 14.04 LTS, that's going to be supported for five years, including bug fixes, including security updates. So if you're considering or studying ARM for deployment, that combination there, the ARM hardware which is available now for, through our partners and Ubuntu is fantastic. These 45,000 packages, basically 45,000, what do you call it, apps kind of uh, Well, that's, that's components, right? Applications are built out of many components. But for instance, one of those applications is Memcache. One of those, applica one of those, one of those packages is Nginx. One of those is Redis. And so and, there's actually a lot there. And all of those 45,000 work as good as x86 on ARM now? Well, it's the first generally available release, right? So being practical. A lot of hardening that's happened on the x86 side has not yet happened on the ARM side. Now, does that mean that they're going to have lots of problems or critical performance issues? We don't believe so because we validated what we've shipped in Ubuntu server to that market. So we believe that what we're providing here is solid. There may be performance tuning that needs to be done. There may be stability issues for some subset of those. But we don't believe that actually something which is not possible to deploy today or else we wouldn't be commercially supporting it. And so, uh, free software is free or what? Uh, sure. How does it work? Free software is free. If you want to deploy free, Ubuntu, that's right. If you want to deploy Ubuntu, if you want to deploy applications on Ubuntu, and they're open source applications that we make available, it's at zero cost. We also provide the updates and security at zero cost. It's really here to remove friction for people that are going to scale out. We, of course, are going to provide our services together with this platform. So Ubuntu Advantage, which is our commercial support offering, is also made available on ARM V8. We're also making all of our cloud tools like Landscape available on this platform as well. So we have services built around the platform, but when you're deploying, the important piece is that you're not paying for the software every time you deploy a new server. And that, I think, is, is required for us to be disruptive in this market. So when you say Ubuntu Advantage, is that a bunch of uh, uh, hard, uh, software geeks, uh, hack hackers who are available to help? What is it? Well, sort of. It is a combination of things. So it is front-level support, so if you're having any problems with your software, including the application, that's very important. We're not going to just support what you would call the operating system, but we support the application as well. If you're running MySQL and there are problems, you call Canonical and you get help under the SLA. So we provide front-level support. We provide, we provide assurance and we also provide access to knowledge base and other material that we provide as part of that release to our signed partners. But we also provide escalation support so that if you're having a challenge either in the operating system core or in the applications themselves, then we'll also work with you on fixing those. So you don't just get access to a help desk, you get access to the engineering inside Canonical that makes Ubuntu. How many engineers are ready right now? Let's say ARM servers become a huge success. Yeah. You have enough engineers to do all the support that people might wow, look need. Wow, look at this event. We've got 600 people just here today. We've got 100 people inside Canonical that are just focused on server for next generation architectures. So there's a lot of knowledge out there. And to be honest, I think we've done a really good job of getting the application and the OS ready for this because it's rare that you'll see an, a, a hardware launch of a completely new architecture and as much software as is available today ready. Nice. So 2017, let's say. Yeah. Uh, 10 million ARM servers, uh, 100 million in the world. Who knows? It will depend on what we do in the next couple, couple of years. So 2014, 2015, 2016 are critical times for ARM service. Where we're going to prove, can the end customer trust this to deliver value on top of what they're getting already on other architectures? And uh, you've been involved in Linaro since the beginning, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so what's been the evolution so far? And what's, what's the status? What do you think? I'm actually very proud of what we accomplished here at Linaro. So I, I couldn't believe how much effort we put into getting it in the beginning. But if I was to look now, it's also incredible how much success it's been. So the number of members, the quality of technical discussion, the amount of impact it's had, I think is, is really a statement to us having found the right solution for the problem that we had at hand, which was making Linux for the ARM ecosystem fantastic.